everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 things that you need to teach your child before they start school or aim to teach your child before they start school just to help them get a little bit of a head start in their education and to give themselves seem to start school with a little bit of knowledge of basic learning. So for those that are new to my channel, my oldest child, Christopher, is now in preschool this year, which is so exciting. I really feel like the tools that I've kind of implemented in our everyday activities with him, with you know exposing him to learning at a young age, has really helped with his confidence to be able to transition into preschool very easily and smoothly. So I do highly recommend as a parent, you are the child's first teacher. So it's important that you are clearly teaching them things, um, teaching them basic learning um, at a very young age. So they do, you know, develop that confidence in learning and love for learning, um, which is the most important thing in my opinion. I've got to pick Christopher up in about half an hour, so I don't have very long to film this video. So I'll try and get through this as quickly as I can. But if you have any questions, please don't forget to leave it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to chat with you guys and answer any questions that you do have. If you are a mum with a child almost going to school or, or is in school, it's never too late to start these activities with your child, even if they have started school. So let's chat in the comments down below um, and share some more ideas as well. So the first thing that I'm trying to teach Christopher um, is to recognize his name. So this could be anywhere from like a plaque or a sticker to be able to see it on a wall or you know on a label like on his clothes and things like that and to recognize that is his name. So kind of like a sight word um, but know that, that that's what his name looks like when it's written out in letters. Um, I think this is really important for you know when you um, leave your child at school and they need to bring back belongings such as a hat and shoes and um, a jumper or whatever the case may be to be able to know that is their piece of clothing or their item. Um, I think it's quite important and also a lot of schools have labels on like um, little tote trays or like, like little hooks where they put their bags on so again very important for them to know where to put it without always constantly asking for help and a teacher to read you know the word um, on the label whatever it is to be able to recognize that is that is his spot or that is his item so I think that really gives them a lot of self-esteem knowing oh yep that says my name I know this one's mine I can take it and you know have that confidence that they're able to do that so some of the ways that we've been trying to um, help him with recognizing his name is obviously trying to write his name and learning his letters as well so a couple of resources that we have implemented to help him with this one of my favorites one of my favorite things is this thing here. So it's been used and loved, so it does have some marks on it. This is like a magnet whiteboard, and it comes with all of these magnet letters. So um, as you can see, they've got little magnets on the back of them. So what I like to do is write his name on the board with just like a whiteboard marker, and then get him to find the letters and put them under the name that I've written on the board for him. So that, um, helps him not only with his letters but also you know being able to write his name and see his name um, written out like that and then eventually obviously trying to write his own name another way is to kind of like trace his name so if you write his name in like little with little dots um, he can then trace over those dots and start doing some letter writing that way but focusing but focusing on his name, not just all the letters in the alphabet. Because I really do think, I mean, it's important for them to learn the whole alphabet, but it's just as important to learn how to write their own name and recognize their own name. So that's something that we've really been trying to work with him and he's getting a lot better. He can definitely recognize his name now. It's just a matter of him writing his own name, but he is only four years old, so he will definitely get there. And considering he has a very long name, being Christopher, um, yeah, he'll get there eventually, but I do feel sorry that he does have a very long name, but it means he'll learn his letters a lot faster, right? <laughs> My second one actually goes hand in hand with learning his, or recognizing his name, is obviously learning his letters. So I've also, I've already touched on this as well, but I did want to share another resource that we um, used with him when he was actually quite young. I think he was around two years old when we started um, using this for him um, and I think it has ex helped extremely well with his letter learning and it's this DVD here from Leapfrog and it's called The Letter Factory and what I like about this it not only teaches them the letters of the alphabet but it 
teaches them the phonic sounds, um, which is great for sounding out words and spelling when they start to write words and sentences and things like that. So, and obviously they do it in a really fun cartoon way, which is very stimulating for the child and it keeps their attention for a lot longer. Adriana also watches this. She's now two years old and she really gets into it a lot. They've got a lot of um, like catchy songs throughout the whole DVD and yeah, it's just a really fun DVD for um, any child to watch really. So we have this playing either in the background or we can sit and have like a relaxation, um, you know, half an hour. I think it goes for about half an hour, 35 minutes. So he can just sit down and just have a little rest while he's um, unconsciously learning. He doesn't even know this is really learning. He just thinks it's a fun DVD to watch. So um, if you haven't seen this before, I don't think they're readily available in Australia, but you can buy them on eBay. Um, from overseas you just got to make sure you're able to play them on our DVDs as well so yeah great little DVD there and another little resource I want to show you that really helps with teaching letters and things like that is this little um, draw to explore writing pad so I think this is a really innovative and creative in the way it's, um, the design is so it not only teaches you know obviously the child can free draw here but it has all of these different settings um, where it teaches them to draw their, their upper case letters and their lower case letters. And it also has all these um, pictures and letters here from the alphabet. So I'll just show you what it does. So I'm just going to concentrate on letters and we'll do upper case letters. So you press the little A button there. Uppercase letter writing. Let's practice writing your name. A. A is so, the first letter of your name. Now let's learn how to write it. This is set up for Adriana, so that's why it's A. But it actually demonstrates how to write the letter. Then slant down like this. Finally, make a line in the middle. So... Yeah, I won't go through the whole thing, but you get the point. So it actually demonstrates exactly where to put your pen, where to stop, where to keep going. Um, and then it gets your child to obviously practice that out below. So Christopher really loves this, actually loves it for drawing as well. So it's teaching him how to draw. <clears throat> but it goes through letters and numbers and um, all that. So it's really, really great little, um, a little activity for your child to do as well to help them learn the letters that way. So another thing I did touch on um, about um, recognizing his name but also touched on writing his name. So writing his name is another thing we're concentrating on teaching Christopher at the moment. So again that's going to teach that's another resources that will help him with writing his name but not only writing his name but also holding a pencil correctly. Now I know there's a bit of like controversy into how you know you should teach a child to hold a pencil. Some say you shouldn't intervene at all and others say you know you should train this method so I just kind of let him work out how to do it himself and now and again I'll try and um, reposition his hand if I need to so I'm kind of doing it in a gentle way um, but he's getting there slowly on his own so it's good to see that he's taking in what I'm telling him to do I still haven't worked out whether he's left or right-handed actually so that's interesting because sometimes he writes with his left and sometimes he writes with his right I thought they usually establish what dominant hand they're going to write with by the age of four, but I might be completely wrong on that. So um, I feel like some activities he does better with his right than left and then vice versa for other things. So yeah, not too sure there. But anyways, we have been practicing with his pencil grip as well. Um, getting him to try to hold a pencil correctly. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is this. Uh, this is a lowercase one, but I'm showing sure it uppercase one. This is the wipe to clean books, which I think are so amazing because you can use this over and over again. But I think this is this really helps with you know holding the pencil and then writing the letters. Um, so obviously you use like a whiteboard marker to trace over the letters, and um, like I said, these are all lowercase. Um, but yeah, he can use this over and over again and you can concentrate on the letters of just his name if that's what you're focusing on or you can do just like two or three at a time and get him to master those before you move on to the other letters of the alphabet. Um, but I think this is a great way to teach them not, over, not only to recognize those letters but also to practice writing them himself and then eventually 
um, you know, when he gets used to, you know, the shape of the letters and how to hold his pencil to maneuver that different, um, that different shape to create that letter, then he can then obviously do it freehand on paper and things like that. So baby steps. Um, Christopher has to be in a particular mood to be able to want to learn. So I find that if I get a ton of different resources for him, he can kind of pick and choose what he's in the mood to do. So sometimes he'll want to gravitate towards this. Sometimes it will be that writing board, um, sometimes it will be that magnet board, so it just really depends. I think it's just important to expose them to all different varieties of um, learning resources and one of them will be effective hopefully in teaching them that skill. So moving from letters now, I'm going to go over to numbers. So then the fifth thing that I am trying to teach Christopher is to learn how to count. Now, obviously being four years old, he's now mastered this, but this is something we were focusing on um, during obviously his twos and threes. And typically by the age of three, he could do up to 20, no problems. Um, and obviously you can then keep extending um, those numbers as they master the 1 to 10 and then 1 to 20 and things like that. So um, another Leapfrog DVD that really helped with his numbers is this Mass Adventure Leapfrog one. So this is another addition to the Letter Factory one that I just showed you before. So this is great because it's all concentrated on mass, but it's not only letters, but it also teaches them counting. Subtraction and addition as well, I believe. So um, again, they do this in a really fun, interactive way. It goes for 36 minutes and they have songs and... Um, obviously in a cartoon format as well so really good resource again they don't even think they're learning when they're watching this and it really did help with his counting um he just started singing the songs that they were singing in the dvd and then all of a sudden he could learn he all of a sudden he was able to count to 20 with no problem so um obviously with any learning activity that that, that they do learn you need to keep repeating it to them and having that repetition in their life so they don't forget that skill because it's quite easy for them to put that in the back of their brain and if they're not practicing they do forget it just like us as adults things that we learned in school we don't kind of remember as well anymore because, and that's just simply because we're not using it day to day and so we don't have that repetitive nature to keep that in our heads so it kind of gets stored in the back of our memory bank so um, definitely once you start teaching your child all these different skills keep reinforcing Seeing these activities with them because you don't want them to forget these activities by the time they start school um, and obviously at school they are learning them every single day in a repetitive motion um, so yeah just keep at it while you're at home so, and another great thing I just wanted to mention quickly is flashcards now this is a pack of four flashcards that I picked up from like the news agency and it covers ABCs, one, two, threes, memory and sight words. Obviously, he's not quite ready for sight words. He might be soon though. Um, but these are wonderful for teaching them again, letters and numbers in a different way. Um, you know, some kids prefer them in a card format. Some kids like to write them. Um, some kids like to do the magnet letters. So it all just depends on your child and what, how they learn, how they like to learn to um, do particular things. So um, Adriana loves these flashcards, she actually uses these quite a lot, where Christopher's more of a hands-on with like, the magnets he really likes and the drawing as well because it's like a really fun pen. Um, but again, I just thought I'll mention this quickly because I just think this is a great resource as well to teach a child anywhere from two and up. And just one more thing before I move on to the next category of what you should teach your child um, is this Leap Start Pad. I think these things are brilliant. I'm not sponsored by Leap, um, Leap Start at all. I know I'm showing a lot of Leap Frog things. I think their resources are really great and educational. But if you haven't seen one of these before, it's just a really interactive learning computer book. Um, you can actually set this up on your computer and track your child's learning as well. Um, and these little books here you buy separately. So we've got the ABC one here. We've got the one one two three or the numbers there as well um and they've got a and then both kids have a whole heap more as well but anyways basically um as you tap i just turned it on for you guys to hear what it sounds like um this is the first page on of this book in particular so you just listen to the instructions and you tap it with the little style pen One, two, three, four, presents. Now follow the string. 
And so this also teaches them like a pencil grip, getting them to trace. There we go, and it goes on and on, and there's like it's just a really fun learning activity for them to do, especially if your child isn't really into learning as much. Um, again, this is like a game for them, it's not really learning, so really great investment. Um, if you haven't got a leap start as yet, I think it's a really great investment for um, any child between two to I think it goes up to seven. Um, let me just see what, yeah, so this is the preschool range, but I do believe they go up to about the age of seven, so that's really good value if you can use it for that many years. So the next thing that we've been practicing with Christopher or you know, trying to teach him at home is learning the days of the weeks, the months, the year, the seasons and all that sort of thing. So um, a really great resource that I've found to help um, teach this is this My First Calendar. Now I think I got this from like eBay or somewhere online like that. I got it a little while ago so I'm sorry I can't remember exactly where I got it from. But I think this thing is brilliant. So it's got the days of the week, the date, the month, the weather and the season. Um, and so, oops. So we go through this every morning and it really emphasizes, you know, learning his the days of the week so it's obviously got Monday through to Sunday and then you've got all the months of the year and then you've got the weather so the little icons for the different weather of the day so we ask him you know what's the weather like today and he'll tell us and then we'll apply this to the weather section here and then we've got the seasons down below there um, and then obviously the dates so the numbers over there so I think this is a great little resource and he really loves using this it's bright and colorful and fun and again he doesn't actually feel like he's learning and he really has learned the um, idea of the days of the week now he's still kind of understanding the months because obviously there's a lot of them and the months go for a lot longer than the days um, but he definitely understands the seasons and the days of the week and again, this really helps with teaching them numbers as well because they have to recognize the numbers to be able to use that for the date, which is down here. Yeah, so a really good resource here. So this is something else that we've been teaching him actively at home. The seventh skill that we've been trying to teach him is how to use scissors. Now, I think using scissors is a... Is something that they definitely need to learn before they start school because they do lots of arts and craft and with that comes cutting things with scissors so you want to be able to um, you know teach them how to use it safely and correctly without getting frustrated and annoyed when they have to do this on their own when they're doing craft activities at school so there's different ways you can obviously teach how teach a child how to use scissors correctly obviously the first one is how to hold it into the hand so using only two fingers and not their whole hand um, there's safety scissors that you can introduce to them so they're not as sharp as normal scissors um, one thing I like to do is draw different lines on a paper so for instance, I'll do like, like a straight line and then I'll do like a zigzag line or a swirly line um, and get him to cut along those different lines. Um, so it's teaching him the eye and hand coordination as well. Um, another fun activity to teach them how to use scissors is Play-Doh. So this little kit actually comes with some scissors. So you can see there the little girl holding the scissors and she's cutting up some Play-Doh. Play-Doh is fairly easy to cut through with, so you could definitely use Play-Doh to teach them how to cut with scissors. Um, but if you find one where they have, you know, scissors as a tool, this is a great way to teach a child how to use scissors correctly and hold them. And again, Play-Doh is very soft, so they can cut through it quite easily. Um, and yeah, it's just a fun way for them to practice using scissors. Okay, so now we're moving on to more of the, like, the self-development part of, you know, teaching Christopher things before he starts school. So the first thing is, um, even though he is toilet trained, and he has been toilet trained since he was two years old, the one thing I really wanted to teach him before he started school was to how to wipe his own bottom. I think a lot of kids have difficulties doing this well, so I wanted to make sure that when he starts school, he doesn't feel embarrassed or insecure that he can't do this himself. And sure, sometimes he still needs help doing it, but he's getting really, really good at doing it himself, as he knows he needs to be a big boy now and do it at school on his own. The teachers, because he is at preschool, the teachers will assist if they need any assistance in that department. 
Um, but again, it's nice for them to be able to do that and have that confidence to do that on their own. Um, so it's definitely something that we have been practicing at home every time he does a number two. Um, I make him try himself and then I'll go and check to make sure he's done it properly. So I think this is really important. And I know once he hits kindergarten, the teachers cannot help them whatsoever. So I really don't want him coming home with like a dirty bottom and being uncomfortable and getting a rash and all that sort of stuff. So definitely something that we are teaching him actively at home so he can master that skill before he starts kindergarten. Um, but he's doing quite well now, even um, being in preschool. So hopefully um, by next year, he would have mastered that skill as well. The next thing that we're teaching him now is to put on his own clothes and his shoes. He is in a Montessori classroom, so they're very much um, encouraging in that way to get them to do things independently. So I think it's important for us to establish that at home as well and encourage him to, you know, put his own clothes on and his shoes and socks if possible. So obviously it depends on the type of shoe it is. He can't do his laces up just yet. But if it's just a shoe with like a Velcro or like a zip or something, then he's all good with that at the moment. Um, he can do his own pants, like his shorts or his pants. His shirt, sometimes he gets stuck with his shirts, but he is getting better. So he's definitely getting a lot better with that. And also, it's summer here, so he doesn't really need excess clothing, but when it does get cold, he'll need to be able to put on a jacket when he's at school, so I want him to be able to do that on his own. Sure, he can ask for help if he needs to, but I think it's really important for him to be able to master that, him, that skill himself and get that independence that he can do things independently. Um, the very, very last thing, I know I've been talking about a lot about independence and doing things on his own, but I also think it's very important for him to be able to ask for help and have that confidence to ask for help because obviously he's still little, um, he still will need help in some aspects of school, he can't do it all himself and even in kindergarten year one and so forth, there's always going to be things that he'll need help with. Um, and not just help, I want him to be able to have the confidence to approach any teachers and ask for for assistance in anything so um, you know if a child has hurt him or um, you know he's fallen over and needs some help there or you know whatever the case may be I want him to be able to have that confidence to approach teachers and you know be able to seek for help when required so um, again that just comes with confidence and being you know encouraging a child and telling your child that it's okay to rely on teachers if you need to ask for help they're my 10 things that you should teach your child before they start school i hope you have enjoyed this video and got something out of it i need to run and pick up my child now from school so i hope you have enjoyed like i said if you have don't forget to give it a big thumbs up subscribe if you're new i would love to have you on board and and don't forget to leave your comments down below. Share some of your I your ideas, what you've been teaching your child before they start school or even whilst they are at school um, because I'd love to chat with you guys and get some more ideas. So leave more suggestions down below. I'd love to hear and chat with you guys and come and just say hello as well. Anyways, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone.